and I will be explaining each one of the things that you have to remember with respect to the switch case. So please understand. So I'm person A in the sense address of A. I have the keyword switch. User has entered the option, right? So I had given one addition. So my dear students, it's going to be very helpful session for all of you to understand the concept of switch case in today's session. So I will be demonstrating and I will be explaining each one of the things that you have to remember with respect to the switch case. Now let's understand, so what is that I have in the program? So guys, please observe, let me trace the program first for all of you and then I will uh, execute and show you what is that I have. So in this, you need to observe the first two lines. I think I don't have to speak about this. You all know that if I want to have my program, it's mandatory thing that I should have two lines. So that is hash include conio.h and hash include stdio.h. You all know that stdio.h in the sense standard input output and also conio.h in the sense console input output. So basically I have this preprocessor directories. So because I will be using some of the functions which is stored in this header files. If I don't have this header files in my program, then I will not be using some of the functions like, you know, scanf, printf, you know, switch, all those things, you know, it is a predefined functions, which is predefined and it is stored in this header files. That is the most important thing that you should understand. So fine, it's uh, uh, no high time that you know, all of you should know about it. You know, in all the programs, in all the classes, I have been explaining this. Let me not spend much time there. All right, so you all know that your program execution should start from main function. So guys, we have the return type. I have taken it as void here and then your main function starts from here. All right, so I have not indented it properly. So purposefully I've done like this. See, indentation of a program is very, very important. So indentation is nothing but I'll show you how to arrange your codes, okay, in a systematic manner. That's what you need to call it as an indentation. So why should I do the indentation? Indentation will help you to find out the errors or it will help you to trace the program very comfortably. So that's what you need to understand with respect to the indentation. I'll show you how to do the indentation when I, when I come to the execution part. All right, so you all know that uh, we are going to execute uh, the program execution starts from the main function. So fine. So what is that I have after that? So I have the data type as int. I have taken the data type as int. So fine, what is this program is all about first of all. So where is the documentation part? I have not entered the documentation part. I'll show you that also because uh, in this program, I'll uh, show you something new which you have uh, not studied in the previous program. All right, so that's why I have not uh, given it. So fine, this program is a calculator program. All right, so to implement the concept of switch case, I'm taking this program. So this will help you, okay? It will give you the option, like, you know, uh, option number one, addition, option number two, uh, subtraction, option number three, multiplication. The user can select which operation he wants to perform. Based on that, you will be entering some value and then you will get the result, all right? This is how the program should work. So let's understand it. So to perform that operation, I need four variables. I will tell you where should I uh, implement this or where do I use these variables. Basically, I have taken how many variables here? I have taken four variables. I will tell you where exactly I have utilized these variables you know, as and when I started uh, starting explaining the codes. So fine, all this A, B, C, D is the variables of type integer. So in this variables, I will be able to store only integer value. So that's what I will be you know, uh, coding at this point of time. So please remember, I will be storing only the integer values in this variable. So fine. So we understood we have four variables. Then after that, what is the next thing that I have? CLR, SCR, please observe, please make a note of it. Whenever I'm using CLR, SCR, so I will be able to clear the previous output, whatever I have in my output screen. So that is what you need to remember. So fine, that's a, that's a cool thing that we have. All right, so what is that we have? Printf, so most of you will not be able to see this because it's in the red color. 
so i will read out for you so i have given here enter your choice i have given enter your choice so what is that choice so it's a print print statement when i'm executing i'll show you so i've given it as a enter your choice then after that i have uh, given print uh, f one addition one okay two subtraction three multiplication you need to observe i have given slash n at each of end of the each line so because the next option should come in the next line that's a reason i have used slash n okay at the end of each and every line that's what you need to make a note of it all right after that so i have used a statement called scanf why because i have given the options to the user user will enter the option it should be integer now how why it should be integer because here in the scanf i have given percentage d sorry here percentage d percentage d in the sense user should enter integer only all right so i'm storing that in the a i'm storing that in the a so please understand so am person a in the sense address of a so one we get gone one variable i'm utilizing it why because to store the option all right second thing i have given here enter the value for c and d if you want to perform addition or if you want to perform subtraction or multiplication minimum you should have two numbers right so that's why I'm, I'm storing the values whatever you are entering so in the variable c and d all right so whatever the values that you are calculating say for example i'm performing the addition i need to store the result in some other variable right so that's why i need one more variable that is b okay in this b i'm storing the result all right so in this c and d i'm storing the values that's what you need to remember so fine with this i wanted to explain one more thing so it, it should be confusing sir why are you saying you know a b c d we're not understanding we're not getting it so that is the reason so this is the bad way of uh, you know giving the variable taking the conventions uh, for a variables what exactly it means sir? whenever you are writing any program naming conventions is very very important naming conventions in the sense whenever you are taking any variable or whenever you are giving any identifiers so the variable name or identifier should speak about it what exactly it is say for example instead of taking a i should have taken it as option instead of taking b and c i should have taken it as value one and value two instead of taking d i should have taken it as result so if that was the case then i would have understood it more clearly than a b c d so this is what you need to follow whenever you are writing your program so naming convention should speak on behalf of what exactly it is performing so that is very important so please make a note of it all right so don't practice like this so this is what you need to keep it in your mind so fine all right uh, i am entering two values then after that the main picture starts so i'll show you this so guys uh, please observe this is what i have i have uh, the switch case starts now so let me explain that to all of you switch case is coming all right so please observe what i have uh, i have beautiful switch case for me so let me explain that so i have the keyword switch i have the keyword switch user has entered the option right so i had given one addition two subtraction three multiplication so in that user will select one option so that is what i'm storing in the a so that's what i have told you right so that option i am passing it as a parameter to the function that is switch so fine you're passing it so then after that i have told you you should use a keyword called case so here i have given one two three whatever the user that i have entered the cases all right say for example i have entered one okay so this a a contains some value all right so that value will be matched with this a is equal is equal to one then this case is matching then whatever i have inside this it will be executed say for example i have entered one so this will be executed what what will happen inside so i have given a code that is b is equal to c plus d addition will happen so after that i'm trying to print the result okay so please observe here after that i will be using the break statement break statement will be coming out of this entire block of code it will not execute 
the second case and the third case are a default case. Once it encounters the break statement, it will come out of the block. That's what you need to remember. So fine. Suppose my case is 2. What will happen here? B is equal to C minus D. Subtraction will happen here. All right. Again, after that, I'm printing the result and I'm, I have the break statement. So if I encounter break statement, what will happen? So please tell me. So it will come out of the block. Again, I have case 3. So again, I have B is equal to C into D. The logic you need to observe here. That is the main thing here. What is that you will remember? The logic. So logic for addition of two numbers is C plus D. All right. So addition you are performing. I have stored the values in C and D, right? So that's why I'm taking C plus D. Okay. So here I have taken C minus B. D is it. So I have taken C minus D. So why is there C D? Because whatever the value you have entered. So I have stored it in C and D. So that's a reason I'm taking C and D. So that's what you need to remember. If I want to see the result, I have to see the B. I have to print B because I'm storing the result in B. That's what you need to remember. So like this, I have three different cases which performs three different operations. Here it performs addition, here it performs subtraction and here it performs multiplication. Suppose I have entered some other choice. I have not entered one, two, three. I've entered something. So that time it will not execute all these three. Okay. It will execute the default statement that is invalid entry. Break come out of the loop. So this is what you need to understand with respect to switch case. Let me show you how exactly this program is working. So let me run this alt plus F9. So I don't have any errors. Press enter. Then after that alt control plus F9. So this will give me the output. So please check out what is the output that I'm getting here. So I have uh, enter your choice. The choice is the first one is addition. Second one is subtraction and uh, third one is multiplication. So that's what uh, I'm getting the option. So let me just enter the first option that is addition. So I need to enter one. All right. So I'm just entering one. So I will enter press enter. So the next statement it shows. Okay enter the value for c and d so when i'll enter 10 enter 20 or I'll, I'll just enter 20 okay fine i'm just entering 10 and 20 so what should be the result result should be 30 right because i have selected option number one option number one is addition let me check the result i'll just press enter so addition of two numbers is 30 so that's what you need to understand so fine let me check out for the next option press enter all right, uh, it's asking me, uh, yeah, no problem. Yes, you can give a warning message. So fine, uh, I'm done with the compilation. There is no errors. I'll just run. So let me select the option number two. For that, I have to enter two. Okay, so I have entered two. Then it is asking me to enter the value for C and D. All right, so let me just type what is that I'm performing subtraction. 10 uh, minus five, let's check. Okay, two values I've entered. So subtraction of two numbers is five. So I only need to check. All right. So it's working for me. Then let me show you the option number three. So let me just run it directly. Okay, control plus F9. All right. So I have uh, option number three. I'll show you. I'll just press three. Okay. How exactly it is working for you. It should be a multiplication, right? So it's asking me to enter the values for C and D. All right. I'll enter. So four. Okay. Uh, next number is 5. So it should be 4 into 5. 4 into 5 should be 20. So let me check the result. All right. So I'm getting 20. So multiplication of uh, two numbers is 20. All right. This is how my program is working. So let me show you the default uh, case, how exactly it is working. So please observe control plus F9. So I will enter option number 4. All right. So it is taking the values. All right. 10. I'll enter 12 plus 3. Okay, invalid entry. Okay, option number four is not that. So that's why I say it says invalid entry. So if it is an invalid entry, then why it is taking the values? Can't you change it? Yes, of course I can change it. So how do I change it? So you can have this reading of this value inside the case. Okay, if you do that, so this error can be solved. Okay, for time being I've done like this. So you can just change it. 
uh, all right i'll show you that say for example i'll uh, do that for one thing uh, rest everything you can do it okay i'll i'll give the print statement and scan of statement here so individually for each and every cases so i have to type it all right uh, enter the value all right so i have enter the value for a uh, sorry c and d right c and d that's what i have to give okay i've given that all right okay the next line that i have is kind of all right i have to read two values so what i'll do is percentage d then i'll uh, give ampersand uh, c comma ampersand d all right so i'll just uh, have the semicolon here so let me compile it right it's working fine so i've done it for only option number one all right so i'll show you that with a default okay so i've selected option number one so fine it's asking me now let me enter 12 plus 3 it is 15 all right it's working fine now so now again i will show you for the default so i will enter 5 all right so what will happen now invalid entry now you are getting all right this is how you have to do so fine just to and avoid the typing things you know I've, uh, I've done that all right so you have to uh, try and experiment all the possibilities so hope you understood how exactly switch case is working so my dear students this is how you need to implement or you need to work with switch case the most important thing that i would like to explain is you can have your own program one single program you can have it here so for example the uh, addition of two numbers i have taken here uh, calculator is the best example to explain the concept of switch case but uh, for example you can give the options like you know uh, calculating the prime number factorial of a given number fibonacci series so like that you know case one will calculate the prime number case two will calculate the factorial of a given number uh, case three fibonacci series all right like that you can you can have one one program in one case so this is how we can do it or we can work with a switch case is what i would like to demonstrate to all of you at this point of time all right so let's go to the next topic so in the next session thank you everybody